Hi there, traders. This is Brad Gibble with the FX Market Insight for the 3rd of April. All right, now as we start to uh, meander through into the start of the Asian session, uh, it's time to really sort of focus on where the key opportunities are going to come up over the next 24 hours and what pairs to really focus on. All right, so let's just uh, scroll down a touch on my FX Trading Hub. Now, the main ingredients that you need to be uh, looking for are in this area here. Okay, today's market conditions. Well, the majors are sort of drifting, but they are starting to, um, we're sort of talking about the US dollar, but the majors are starting to get a little bit of traction. I think if we can get some connecting data, either weak Euro, weak Aussie or weak Kiwi data, we're going to start to see the dollar get clear upward direction. And that's when everything will start trending a lot clearer. All right, so we've got a few things to wait for. Core market drivers, well, unfortunately, still in the backbone or the background of the markets, it's geopolitical events. Obviously, Brexit, that thing will just never end. And um, the one thing that, you know, even the media, the media holds back on a lot of information. So they're waiting for Brexit news to sort of simmer. While it's hot, they can sell a lot of advertising and papers. The Chinese-US situation will pop up very quickly and take over as soon as Brexit is resolved, I believe. Now, let's look at the uh, fundamental aspect. Well, ECB still bearish. The RBA concerned about global growth, as is uh, the RBNZ, which who did signal last week that uh, the next possible move in rates would be down. So we're starting to get a connection here with some of the key pairs. Uh, and this is, you know, this is a good time. You know, you get the two Antipodeans, the Aussie and Kiwi, both heading south. They're in the early stages of moving south as well. So what we're looking for is something to really give them a kick. And that's where you come back and you start really focusing in on what the key uh, releases are and connecting the dots. Now, the good thing for us is today we have Aussie retail sales figures. Okay, this is going to be an important number for, uh, obviously, for the Aussie and the overall economic health to see how things are moving along. Weak numbers fits in perfectly with that downward bias. And to me, that would be a really good opportunity to get short. Um, follow that up with some uh, the, the Chinese services PMI. Now, this is a, a smaller impacting data, but once again, if it, if it deteriorates, it further shows that the Chinese market is being impacted by the US tariffs, and that would be a negative for the Aussie and Kiwi, right? So not only just trading the Chinese yuan, also the uh, Aussie and Kiwi there as well. Now, a number that usually would be uh, high on our agenda would be the UK services data. Unfortunately, Brexit, such a major event, the economic numbers out of the UK are pretty much sidelined. So even though that's coming out, just be aware, if, you, if you're thinking of trading around the momentum of that event, probably think again, because it's not uh, really something to get overly excited about. All right, now, as you come into the North American session, there's two key uh, releases. Now, as I said, the US dollar on the hourlies is, is ticking higher. It's almost through some resistance on the dailies and that will send it into a, an upward bias. But what we need is we need the dollar to get a kick, a positive kick or an injection. The, uh, the weekly, uh, well, the ADP non-farm employment numbers, right? This is, a, this is different to the non-farms, but it's supposed to sort of give you some sort of replication. Uh, this could be a bit of an injection of either strength or weakness in the dollar, depending on the outcome, as will the follow-up uh, a couple of hours later, the ISM non-manufacturing PMI numbers there as well. So hopefully, my ideal scenario is we get clear direction here, positive numbers out of the US. That will give the US dollar positive upward bias. And that works in perfectly with the Euro, Aussie and Kiwi. And we should start to see some really good trending markets. And I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, the other pairs up here, the other dollar pairs come and fit into play. All right. Now, looking at the, um, just give you a look, quick look at the charts. The, the charts aren't hugely uh, gorgeous. I mean, of course, Euro still has that nice um, uh, picture at the moment. Let me just get the pen up here. Nice downward momentum. It is sort of stalling here, but you know what? It's also breaking down through a major level here. So you'd, you'd expect some sort of traction around 112, the figure. Uh, if we get that, as I said, some stronger US numbers, this thing will be down at 111 and a half and cruising towards 110. The market will feel more confident and comfortable being short Euro if we do get those uh, stronger US numbers. The Aussie, it is breaking down and the Kiwi, that little uh, sort of retracement, slight retracement now, it's uh, clearly 
moving to the downside as well. So there's been a shift in the, the fundamental perspective from the RBNZ and the RBA. They're now sort of calling wicked global growth and worries about all this sort of crap. So we are going to start to see those pairs drift lower. Dollar CAD, well, oil's back at 62 bucks 50 uh, and Dollar CAD is all over the place. There's a bit of political scandal popping up that Trudeau's got a handle, the Canadian Prime Minister, and that's sort of throwing Dollar CAD around a bit. But uh, oil going down, you've got to expect Dollar CAD to sort of catch up at some point. It's a little bit tricky. Uh, Sterling, obviously, not sure what's going on there. And we are still seeing the dollar slowly climb against dollar yen or against the yen, but uh, still not breaking any levels at this point for me to get overly excited about. All right, traders, that's pretty much it from me. The, uh, the general news out there, it's the same old, same old. There's no real reason to, that we'll need to go through it. We've got, uh, you know, Theresa May doing her best to try and get some sort of deal here for the UK, but uh, everyone's working against her. And that's pretty much dominating the whole news. Now, as I said, this uh, um, US-China situation is just simmering away in the back end. Don't, don't think for a minute Trump has given up on this. It uh, looks like China are trying to do their best to get things moving and, and being positive. Even with that, you'd expect Trump to just come in and, and double knuckle them just to, just to piss them off because that's his style. All right, but that's it for the news. The, uh, the core stuff to keep an eye on, you'll find on the MyFX Trading Hub. So tune in today. Uh, I think the Asian session potentially has the best uh, potential with the uh, retail sales, Aussie retail sales and the Chinese services data. Outside of that, you would be focusing very closely on the uh, US data, and there's a bit of gap between those two. So we should get some sort of uh, potential opportunities there. All right, traders, all the best. If you have any questions, jump in the 247 trade zone, and uh, we'll do our best to fill you in. All right, cheerio.